My boy is saying you're hot. I'm back with another Filipino yeah. reaction video. Now today I'm gonna take a look at the easy peasy history of the Philippines. We're gonna check it out, we're gonna see if the facts are correct or not, and maybe we can even learn something new about the Filipino history. Well, we probably all know something, like we know that you have been under Spanish rule for about 300 years, we know who Jose Rizal is, and a lot of other stuff, but who knows if we will still learn something new. And let's see if the facts are correct. Are you ready? Easy peasy history of the Philippines. There we go. Yeah, I like the bird. An easy peasy history of the Philippines. The Philippines! Birthplace of boxer Manny Pacquiao and the Black Eyed Peas member Whoa. Al Manny Pacquiao, of course, they gotta start with him. And this is really funny. Even though I'm not really a boxing fan, I still like to watch when Manny Pacquiao he fights. And the funny thing is, my sister, who actually still lives in Denmark, she loves Manny Pacquiao. She's always, always watching when there's a, a match on. Yeah, well, it's not a game, right? It's a match. And, she, well, she's a girl, but who cares? Anybody can like boxing, right? Let's see what else. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Black Eyed That's right. Binturongs, they smell like popcorn. Really? Over 30 volcanoes really? and delicious, really? delicious yep. foods. Yeah. Seafood, fresh fruit, cheap alcohol. Did we mention the banana ketchup? Yep, that is a real thing in the Philippines. Oh my god, banana ketchup. Who doesn't know banana ketchup? If you've been to the Philippines, if you live in the Philippines, you absolutely know banana ketchup. And it tastes really good. It's really good banana ketchup. You can use it in spaghetti or sa hot dogs. Hey, actually, that's a great idea. Why not put the hot dogs in the spaghetti and then put on the banana ketchup? Well, that's a Filipino dish, isn't it? All right, guys, if you haven't tried banana ketchup yet, you gotta find the nearest Filipino grocery store, go out, buy yourself a bottle of banana ketchup, and give it a try. It tastes absolutely amazing. If you think all of that sounds pretty great, well, we're here to tell you that it really is that great. But how did the Philippines become the Philippines of beautiful culture and wonderful foods? A place where tourists can see volcanoes and whale sharks. Easy peasy. Let's look at some history and figure it out. The Philippines is an archipelagic county. County? I thought it was a country. Huh, okay. Which means it's made up of a lot of little islands. Almost 8,000 islands to be exact. To be exact? Almost 8,000 to be exact. But if you want to be exact, you've got to say how many it actually is. And I understand that recently there's been a lot of uh, islands added. Something like 200. I guess that's because of all the new technology wow. they have. They can much better survey the, the areas and the sea. And then of course, as the famous beauty queen or wannabe beauty queen said, uh, is this high tide or low tide? <laughs> well, we all know that. <laughs> There's more than 7,000 islands in the Philippines. So if you guys know how many exactly there is right now, please leave it in a comment below. And don't use the old figure. Please use the new updated figures. That's a ton of islands. But actually, only 2,000 are inhabited. Okay. In fact, over 2,500 of them are not even named. Oh. And more are being discovered every day. Around... Huh? Wait. More being discovered every day? If it's every day that more islands are being discovered, does that mean, let's say, at least one a day? That means we are adding like 365 new islands a year to the Philippines. Hey, in 10 years, that'll be another 3,000. Whoa. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, <laughs> that might not be completely correct. Yes, there are new islands being discovered because of better technology, but still one a day or several a day? I don't think so. 25,000 years ago, an indigenous people of dark complexion, called Negritos, traveled from a land bridge in Asia over to the islands of the Philippines. Easy peasy! The Negritos would be considered the first people to inhabit the Philippines. There is some archaeologic evidence that there may have been people on the islands many thousands of years before then, but it's still a bit up in the air. In 3000 BCE, waves of Indonesians traveled by sea and landed in the Philippines. And in 200 BCE, the first Malayan settlers arrived from South China. Huh? What's going first on? Malaysian settlers arrived from South China? I'm sorry, but maybe I'm wrong here. But I thought the Malays came from Malaysia because we are part of the Malaysian race in the Philippines. And 
so, so does uh, no, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. That's why we even have a lot of words which are very similar. Uh, people look very similar in Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Yeah, some similarities in words are like Ilao, Arau. Um, they're very closely connected, these countries. But Malays from South China, I don't think so. But there are a lot of Chinese coming from South China and moving into the Philippines, of course. So if you guys know if I'm wrong here, please let me know below. It could be very interesting to know if the Malays also came from China. Modern Filipino culture was heavily influenced by the Malays, and many Filipino peoples have grown out of intermarriages between Malay and indigenous peoples. In the 1300s AD, the Philippines began trading extensively with India, Indonesia, China, and Japan. Okay. Arab traders from Indonesia introduced Islam to the Filipinos. In 1521, Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan would be the first European to discover the islands. Of course, the islands had already been discovered many times before by many different peoples, but, well, that was kind of how the cookie crumbled yeah. back in the day. Magellan named the island the Archipelago of San Lazaro. San Lazaro? I thought it was San Lazaro. Well, I guess this is the funny thing. When you live in the Philippines, you start pronouncing things differently. And I noticed that even I do it after being here so long. When I pronounce certain things, it becomes different. Well, San Lazaro is what... I would usually say, and I know there's a place in Manila called San Lazaro, there's an SM San Lazaro, there's a San Lazaro hospital, but um, I guess this guy is not a Filipino. Easy peasy, right? Okay. Wrong. Nope. Unfortunately for Magellan, okay. he sailed to the island of Cebu and Christianized ah. the local king, yes. or Raja. But a chieftain of the island of Mactan rebelled against Cebu. Chieftain Lapu Lapu, cool name, took 2,000 men and defeated 48 armored Spaniards. 48 armored Spanish people against 2,000 Filipinos? Of course the Filipinos will win, right? <laughs> Magellan died in the fight six weeks after he had discovered the Philippines. Tough luck, Magellan. But don't worry, there is a white obelisk marking the spot where Magellan... Well, this is actually funny because this is one of the first things that I ever knew. Wow, was, we got a thunderstorm going on outside. Well, it's the rainy season according to Pagasa. So, Menulan, yep, Menulan, and Thunderstorm. Sana walang baha, no? Ay, kalangan talaga water. Kalangan talaga tubig kasi sa angkat tam, walang tubig tawe. Eh. Dito sa bahay, may tubig kaso walang drinking water, eh. Ano ba yan? Na naman. Well, anyhow, back to where I came from. One of the first, first things I knew about the Philippines was really that Magellan got killed in the Philippines. Alright? I know he was a Portuguese uh, explorer, but he was in the... Uh, on the payroll of the Spanish king. All right, so it was basically a Spanish expedition going here. And then the other thing I knew is really what I'm seeing outside right now. I'm seeing the thunderstorm. Well, it's not really a typhoon yet, but I remember learning in school, this was the very first thing I ever knew about the Philippines was um, about the typhoons here and all the natural disasters like the volcanoes like the ECPC said just now so many vol volcanoes here we have a lot of natural disasters like earthquakes, typhoons, volcanoes and stuff like that we're actually in a very unlucky position I remember that's at least what my teacher told me back in school in Denmark many years ago so let's get back to Magellan and see what happened after he died was killed not bad in 1542, a Spanish expedition led by Ruy Lopez de Villalobos claimed the islands for Spain and named them the okay. Philippines after yep. Prince Philip. Yep. Prince Philip would go on to become King Philip II of Spain, and the Philippines became part of the Spanish Empire. In 1872, three Filipino priests were executed by the Spanish colonizers. The crime? Their supposed complicity during an uprising of Filipino workers at a naval yard. The priests Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora. Burgos, Zamora? Huh. It's not a samurai, no? I thought that was Burgos and Zamora. Gomez? Yeah, okay, that was fine. Well, anyhow, guys, we always hear about uh, Jose Rizal, Aguinaldo, and all these other local. Wow, it's really. Wow, can you hear the thunder outside? That's amazing. Wow, that's great. Let's get some water. Let's get some water. We need the rain. So, anyhow. Back to Burgos, uh, Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora. Now, why don't we hear a little bit more about these guys? I rarely ever hear about them. And it would be nice to know 
what exactly the point was of the rebellion. Why did they rebel? I understand they were priests and they were rebelling against the Spanish Catholic Church. Was it also against the government? Or what was it that they really wanted to change? If you guys know anything about this, let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to know something more. Let's see. Alam ko eh, si Jose Rizal, si Aguinaldo, si Bonifacio, they're the national heroes. Kaso sino si Gomez, Bocos, and Zamora? Let me know, huh? Referred to as Gomburza. Gomburza? Okay. That's a little bit like uh, our fellow YouTubers, Jamil. If you haven't watched them, you should. <laughs> Lots of fun. One of the earliest named portmanteaus. Benifer and Brangelina have nothing on these guys, became martyrs, and helped to inspire the beginnings of Philippine nationalism. All right, guys, I don't know if that was a coincidence or what, but that thunder is really getting very loud here. I'm sorry for the interference. I don't know if we can still use this video, but I'll give it a try. But just as the nationalism was coming up, that's when the thunder started. In 1886, Filipino doctor, poet, author, and nationalist Jose Rizal wrote a famous novel, Noli Mi Tanger, The Lost Eden, which was a diatribe against Spanish administration and the religious orders in the Philippines. Well, Jose Rizal has finally arrived on the stage, and we are going forward to the nationalism, which resulted, of course, in the liberalization of the government and eventually a free and independent uh, Philippines. Wasn't there a time where the British were here for just a couple of years in the 1860s as far as I remember? And with regards to Jose Rizal, I know that he also studied abroad, so he was a very educated person, as many of the mestizos were at that time, and he was a mestizo, all right? And um, I actually remember that he studied in Spain and in Germany, in Heidelberg. I actually saw a statue to Jose Rizal in Heidelberg some years ago when I was in Heidelberg, Germany. And uh, that was actually a very proud moment. You saw somebody that you recognize from the place you actually live or spend most of the time in. Easy peasy. Because of this, he was exiled from the Philippines. In 1896, while on the way to Cuba to serve as a doctor. Wait a second. On the way to Cuba, but the ship is going to Malaysia. All right, guys, you gotta learn your geography. Cuba's the other way around. And at that time, Cuba was also under a Spanish administration, as far as I remember. Right onto the American Spanish War, where the Philippines came under the US administration or US government. Rizal was forced to return to Manila. Once there, he was arrested for revolution, tried and sentenced to death by a firing squad. Oh, that was down in the Rizal Park, the firing squad. Uh, that's where he died. He was martyred. And if you guys haven't been to Fort Santiago yet, I absolutely suggest you go to Fort Santiago, you go down to Intramuros, it's a beautiful place. And you can find a video that I made about uh, Intramuros in my uploads or in my video list, my playlist. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful places actually in Manila. Well, there's really not that much left after the Second World War because almost everything got bombed as far as I understand. It was really the most heavily destroyed city after Second World War. Okay, let's go back. His execution set the country aflame, causing a revolution to break out. But when the Treaty of Paris ended the Spanish-American War in 1899, the Spanish ceded the Philippines to America. Yes. Now, as far as I understand, this was really not what was planned by the Filipinos. The Filipinos wanted it to be an independent and free country. And they actually did declare this and kind of got screwed over a little bit by the Americans. Uh, the Americans paid $20 million to the Spanish to purchase the Philippines and during the liberation of Manila, the Americans actually made an agreement with the Spanish government, a Spanish administrator, that they would have a mock battle for Manila. As long as the Americans would not allow the Filipino rebels to enter into Manila, then after the mock battle, the Spaniards would surrender Manila and the Philippines to the American soldiers. 
The Filipinos were not down with this, though, and they declared independence and began a guerrilla war effort against the U.S. In 1902, the insurrection... 1898, it was declared as June the 12th, or was it 1899? Something like that. Okay, that was June 12th where Aguinaldo declared independence for the Philippines. But then in 1946, the independence was granted by the United States of America on July 4th, which is also the Independence Day of America. So for a lot of years, the Independence Day in the Philippines was actually celebrated on July 4th and not June 12th, which we have reverted to again. The election ended after the American governor of the Philippines, William Taft. Yes, the Taft that would one day be the 27th president of the USA improved economic conditions, settled disputes over land ownership, and allowed Filipinos to study in the U.S., which helped modernize the country. Easy peasy. 30 years later, in 1934, the U.S. promised Philippine independence to be effective in 1946, allowing plenty of time for this transition to take place. A year later, the Filipino people approved a constitution, created the Commonwealth of the Philippines, and named Manuel Quezon y Molina as president. But in 1941, the Japanese invaded, because not even the Philippines could avoid World War II. The Japanese defeated General Douglas MacArthur, and President Quezon was forced to establish a government in exile. Three years later, Quezon died, but Vice President Sergio Osmeña took over as president and General MacArthur reinvaded the Philippines. Easy peasy. MacArthur liberated Manila. Great job. And then, President Osmeña established the government once more. And finally, in 1946, just like the U.S. promised, the Philippines became an independent nation. Manuel Roxas y Acuña was elected the first president of the new independent nation. Today, the Philippines... Okay, let's see what they are talking about here about our biodiversity. Oh, that's a tar ship. I love tar ships. I remember my sister once. Uh, she must have been around 16 years old. I was in Bangkok at that time and my sister came to visit, uh, stayed in the house for a few months. And one night, I had already fallen asleep. I heard some very funny noises coming from my sister's room. I was like, somebody was running around in there, you know, horse playing and stuff like that. So I went to her room, knocked at the door, and she was going all, all crazy because she had actually bought at the night market in Bangkok a tar ship. She brought it home. Now, when she bought it, which she should not have done, of course, I mean, this is not an animal that you keep as a pet, right? Um, so she had bought it, and it was very quiet. It was in a little cage, and she thought, wow, this is so cute, all these big eyes, you know, and it doesn't really move, it just sits there, you know. So of course, it must have been drugged, I guess, so people wouldn't, you know, see how they really are. So of course, once the drug wore off, this little Tasha got all scared, you know, and ran around and climbed up and down everything, and what a mess, man. Don't buy endangered species or, or animals that belong in the wild, okay? Uh, they belong in the wild, that's where they should stay. Or, you know, they could have some in the zoo where we can go and have a look and we can get to know more about these animals, but do not buy a tarsier as a pet. Place for tourism. It produces and exports more coconuts than any other country in wow. the world. Really? Delicious! Well, I also know that mangoes, mangoes from the Philippines are extremely popular, especially in China and Vietnam. When I go to China, I always see uh, Filipino mango everywhere. It's unbelievable. They, they love the taste of the Filipino mango, and I have to say it's really, really good. Because when I try mango, which has been grown in other countries like either Vietnam, or Thailand, or even the south of China, they don't taste the same. The flavor is different, the sweetness is, is missing, you know, it's not the same. Filipino mangoes, Absolutely delicious. Asarap talaga yung mango taga Philippines, diba? More than 90% of Filipinos speak English okay. and many are multilingual. In fact, the Philippines is the wow. fifth largest English speaking nation. Is it fifth largest? Okay. Well, we got America, of course, we got Great Britain, England. Ah, we got but Australia, they don't have too many people. I actually thought we were the third largest. I wonder who the others are. Ah, India. Ah, India might be bigger, yeah. Okay. Amazing. The Philippines is the top supplier really? of nurses in the world. Thank you so much, nurses, for helping us to heal when we're sick. And Filipinos mm, love basketball true. and boxing. 
Tourists can visit volcanoes. Some of them are still active. The Puerto Princesa underground river, yep. the chocolate hills, the banal rice terraces, or the beautiful beaches of the island of Boracay. Great job, Philippines. If you love learning about the history of the Philippines, it's easy peasy to click to subscribe. Well, guys, that was definitely a very compressed, very short version of the history of the Philippines. What do you think missed? Was there any important events in the history of the Philippines that missed in this video? Or was it, was it really pretty accurate? I think it was like 95% accurate. There were some things which were missing maybe. It could have expanded a little bit more, but I guess um, if you only got a few minutes to make a video about the history of the Philippines, it's not bad. It gives a good introduction. I like the graphics, absolutely amazing. And if you go around the Philippines, you can actually learn a lot more about the history. You know? So guys, when you're in the Philippines, try to learn something about the Philippines. Don't just go to the beach. Don't just go to Makati or BGC, you know, sit with a cup of coffee like I usually do. It's important to learn something about the history of the place you stay in because it really tells you how the people are, why they are like they are, why they're different from you. And, uh, oh, there's a couple of museums you can actually go to. I know the National Museum, of course, uh, it's a great place to start. There's also a few other ones. There's the Meralco Museum. There's the Lopez Museum. A uh, few other ones, I uh, don't really seem to remember much. Well, of course, the Intermores, the whole district of Intermores is a great place to go. Please let me know if you know of any other museums that would be great. Oh, there's one in Makati. I think it's the Ayala Museum. That's, uh, I, I believe that's located where the old airport was. Yes, guys, at the Ayala Triangle, there actually used to be an airport. I will see if I can dig up some old photos of that and post them in a video coming up very soon. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go and check if it's gonna get flooded outside because I hear the thunder is getting really, really strong and I hope it's raining a lot because we seriously need water. All right, guys, see you next time.